Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi isanin ila yawmiddini wa ba'd ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Today I want to share with you a couple of thoughts while I'm sure many of you have had time to reflect over these past three months, today I want to share three of my personal reflections. The first of those is that our blessings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who gives, and He is also the one who withholds. قُلْ إِنَّ رَبِّي يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ Say, my Lord gives in abundance to whoever he wills and sparingly gives or withholds or restricts to whoever he wills, though most people do not understand. Because of this, we have to be grateful for the many things that we do have. In a time where it's easy to count the things that we've lost, or the struggles that we're going through. We still have to take stock in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us often more than we could ever imagine. And by doing so, by being grateful for the blessings that we do have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase us in blessing. <laughs> وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَا شَدِيدٌ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what means, and remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will surely increase you in favor. If you are grateful and you show gratitude, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will increase you in favor. But if you deny, indeed my punishment is severe. When you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounty, he will give you more. Many of us, we're, lucky, we're looking for that right now. We're looking for more. Whether it's health or wealth or time with loved ones and family members. When you're ungrateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove those things from your life. So we have to be patient for the things that we've lost as well. And when we're patient for the losses in our lives and the trials and tribulations, we will be rewarded. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means indeed the patient will be given their reward without account. بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Without being taken to account. Some of the early imams says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pile upon you reward. Those that are patient, he will pile upon them reward. Some have even said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be so generous and is so bountiful for the patient that he won't even consider your good deeds. He'll just give you abundance more than you could ever imagine, more than you could ever do. And others have gone to the extent to say what is meant here is that he will give you jannah. When you are patient with loss, trial, and tribulation. My next point, number two, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a very comprehensive, very practical, very sensible religion. And for that we have to be grateful. It's very practical and very sensible. It's very easy. You know, this scenario, not only is it one that we could never imagine, I mean, before it started, and we tried our best to deny what's going on. We're still struggling with the changes that we have to make. But it's also something that I would imagine no living person today has gone through. I mean, think about the magnitude of the quarantine. It's, it's gone global. It's not just us that are feeling the pressure and the effects of this, but it's a global quarantine, closing the masajid around the world. It's not just here in New Jersey, not just here in the United States, but it's the Muslim world as well. The masajid have been closed. 
It's been like three months. You know, just yesterday I reached out to one of my mashayikh in Kuwait. And I told him that we're going back to the masajid for the first time. That today is our first Juma in three months. And I asked him how he was doing in Kuwait. He said, we've gone back to the masjid as well. However, our Juma prayer is still closed. Think about that. Still, that's the entire dola. The whole country of Kuwait is still on lockdown when it comes to Friday prayer. The impact of this virus is far-reaching, and it's penetrated deep into our everyday life, disrupting, disrupting our norms in a major way. It's redefining what has become normal. And while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with these types of trials and afflictions, viruses and disease and death, He's also given us a means to cope and to find cures. Closing the masjid, wearing masks during prayer, covering your face in prayer, that's an issue in the Islamic law. Standing six feet apart, when the imam starts the prayer, he says, close the ranks, straighten the rows. You know, it's something that we would have never imagined having to consider. So while under normal circumstances, these things would be outlandish, they wouldn't be advisable, some of them would be abhorred, disliked, makru, or even haram to do. But due to extenuating circumstances, they're not only acceptable within the framework of Islam, but they can reach the levels of being advisable or obligatory. That's right. Within the tradition of our faith, within the legal code of Islam, you'll find if you dig deep enough, and many of the imams, they had to go searching and digging to find how to handle the scenario, and sure enough, what we needed was there. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to burden the faithful. Indeed, Allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardship. This is one of, the, one of the beauties, one of the, one of the beauties of our faith of Islam, and for that we have to be truly grateful. Allah doesn't want to burden us with our faith, but wants to make things easy and sensible. ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters, you know going through this pandemic we have seen many people lose their lives to the virus and we will continue to see people lose their lives we are still in the woods, so to say. As excited as we are to get out of the house and back to some normalcy, it's, it's not over. But when is it ever over? It's over when you leave the dunya. The trials and the tests, they are nonstop. You know, out of, as of today, 7.6 million confirmed cases around the world, that's 425,000 people have died due to the coronavirus. You know, during this time, we also got to see the horrid and tragic results of another deadly virus. It's the virus and the disease of racism. We watched as a man who was handcuffed and subdued, we watched as he was killed by those charged to protect and to serve. And no, the loss of one life is not like the loss of 425,000 other lives. But in this case, it's much worse. How could that be? In this case, it's much worse. مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we often quote this verse when we're talking about terrorism, etc. We're trying to defend ourselves. We've been pushed into a corner, so we quote this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if anyone kills a person, unless in ret retribution for murder or spreading corruption in the land, it is as if he kills all of mankind. When you kill someone 
unjustly, unfairly. This type of murder is, is equivalent to killing everyone. Unless we are all safe, none of us are safe. In other words, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Those are the ones that are being oppressed today. You know, the curtain has been pulled back yet again. This is not something new for our country. It's been pulled back yet again, exposing the vile nature of this disease and, and those who continue to spread it. It's a virus. People will spread it. You know, so we saw people take to the streets, get on social media, expressing their anger and their outrage. And this leads me to point number three, my final point of reflection for the day. Number three is the great lengths people are willing to go to secure justice and eradicate oppression. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kunu qawwa mina lillahi shuhada'i bil qist. Shuhada'a bil qist. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَأَنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا إِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, what, what means, O you who believe, stand out firmly for Allah and be just witnesses and let not the enmity and hatred of others make you avoid justice. Be just. That is nearer to piety and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is well acquainted with what you do. Brothers and sisters, as people of faith, this is our cause. Justice is our cause. And while we certainly aim to eradicate racism from the hearts of every single soul, we must demand justice for all, regardless of the backlash. You know, the carriers of this virus continue to try and, and pull that curtain closed yet again. And they are trying to disrupt, or I should say, they're being disrupted. And so... They're trying to misdirect us and to confuse us. Look at the rioting. Look at the looting. What about the virus? Why are they not home? Where's the quarantine gone? Protesting protects you from the virus? They're not adhering to health protocols. Look at the man and his sins. They're doing anything and everything to try and distract us from the truth of the matter. If these are the things that we think about first, we drank that Kool-Aid. If our minds go to that first, we drank that Kool-Aid. We're buying in to that system. And the problem, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the system is rigged. It's a man-made system. All of them are rigged. So today I remind you not to get caught up in investing too much into these systems. Yeah, you may have to play it a little bit. You have to work it a little bit to get what you need. But never look to it to be your salvation, to save you. Not in this life and not in, certainly not in the next. Don't look to the Republicans. Don't look to the Democrats. And as cool as they may look, the Green Party, they're not going to save you either. No movement will. You know, right now, it's just about managing the lesser of two evils. You're doing that in order to enact needed change and secure justice. Your salvation, however, is found in Islam in this life and with Allah in the next. You can't let these politics divide us as a community, as people that have been united by the book of Allah. We have to come together and enjoin what is right, prohibit what is wrong in our own unique way. And in doing that will be examples for the world to follow. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to guide us to restore health to those that are sick, wealth to those in financial straits, and justice to the oppressed. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqim as-salah.